Good morning, everyone, and happy Monday. Uh, this is Tony Butler with Insurance Agency Marketing Services. I'm one of the life sales directors here, and today's webinar, um, being that May is DI Awareness Month, uh, we have Paige Phelps, who is the Individual Disability Insurance Regional Sales Manager with the Surety. Um, we're going to be talking about disability and disability with the Surety. Uh, but before we get started, I wanted to go through a few introduction slides here uh, real quick. Um, here at IMS, uh, we do understand that as an agent, a lot of your business is based on referrals, as is ours. So we do provide agents that are pointed with us a uh, referral bonus. So if you do refer an agent to us and they get appointed with any of the carriers that we do work with, uh, we do provide you with a $50 referral bonus any subsequent business that they submit um, with those carriers, we do provide you 20 basis points on that business. So if you have any questions, feel free to give us a call back here and uh, I'd be more than happy to go through um, the details on that. We also have a new productions builder um, bonus based on your production. We used to have three levels. We've upped that to five different levels. And as you see here, We've got the 100,000, 250, 500,000, 750, and 1 million uh, dollar. This is a paid premium. Um, we offer that for our agents that is first 180 days of being appointed. Um, if you have any questions regarding our new producers builders, uh, please give us a call. Any one of our sales directors uh, will be happy to answer any of your questions. We also uh, provide you with back office support here, Insurance Agency Marketing Services. Uh, we like to say that we uh, like for you to work smarter, not harder. Uh, one of the big pieces uh, that we do provide for our agents is paperless contracting. If you've ever filled out appointment paperwork, you know that can be a, a painstaking uh, task. Uh, we do now have paperless contracting available. Um, we pretty much help you work through your business from submission to commissions. So uh, we're here to help in any way, shape, or form as far as submitting business, any questions that you have, whether it be on the life or annuity side. Um, with the current uh, pandemic situation that's going on, uh, a lot of agents are not uh, able to uh, sit in front of their clients, or have the clients sit in front of them. So we do have a couple of platforms um, where you can submit paperless contracting. One is through Firelight. Now, if you see here on the left, these are the carriers that are available on Firelight. Uh, to the right are the carriers that we're in process of adding. Um, you do need to get registered on the Firelight platform. So if you have questions about that, uh, give us a call at 800 number. Um, any of the sales directors can help you get registered on that. So feel free to give us a call. We also have a creative marketing solutions uh, department and that department is designed to help with turnkey agency or digital solutions. What that means is if you need assistance on uh, newsletters, postcards, uh, you're looking for a logo designer, getting uh, your logo redesigned, uh, brochures, or you're looking to get in the digital marketing space, uh, they help with personal website, um, help uh, digital marketing strategies. If you have questions or an interest in um, updating your business on one of these solutions, please uh, give that department a call. Jacob and uh, his creative design team can help with you on that. We also have a 24-7 website. I mentioned earlier as far as electronic applications. We also offer electronic applications through iGo eApp Solution, which is available on our website. Um, if you are a life insurance writing agent, uh, you do have the ability to run term quotes on our website as well as universal life quotes. Um, you can access forms online uh, for you annuity agents. Uh, there is an annuity grid that's available for you um, as well as long-term care product grid if that is something that um, you're in the market to do. We also provide a retirement analyzer for our agents. Uh, we do offer this on a 30-day trial basis. Um, what this retirement analyzer does is it helps you answer questions from your clients such as can I continue my present standard of living into my retirement years? When can I retire without running out of money? Or how would it affect my family if I were to die prematurely? Um, 
after the 30-day trial period, there is a charge unless you are producing at least 250,000 in annuity premium or single uh, premium life. If you have questions, uh, our product expert on this is uh, Marcus Solar. He's one of our annuity sales directors. He'd be more than happy to kind of walk you through the process of the analyzer. So feel free to give him a call or any of our sales directors for that matter. We also have an IMS wealth management team. And that wealth management team is there for your higher net worth clients. Um, it can help you as an agent increase your revenue, improve client retention, and strengthen client relationships. If you have questions regarding the IMS wealth management team, uh, please feel free to give Charles Jr. a call. He'd be more than happy to answer any questions that you have. We also offer Life and Annuity Academy. Um, the annu Life and Annuity Academy is a two-day training uh, session that we pay for. We try to do one uh, once a quarter. Uh, we did have one scheduled uh, for May, but that was canceled due to the current COVID-19 situation. Uh, just to kind of give you uh, background on the two-day training, um, what we do is we talk about sales ideas and concepts, whether it be on the annuity side of things as well as life um, insurance. Uh, we do have some of our top producers come in and speak, and a lot of times we will partner with one of our top carriers, and with that, uh, talk about uh, products that they offer as well as uh, market trends. If you have questions regarding our life and annuity academy, I do believe I have a polling question on that. Um, yes, I do. Let me put that up here real quick. Um, be more than happy to provide some additional information to you on that. Um, right now, uh, we haven't scheduled any any academies um, since we've canceled the one for May, but as soon as we know what we're gonna be doing here in the future, we'll definitely get that information out to our agents. I'll leave this up for a few more seconds and uh, we'll move on. Okay, looks like everybody's done voting there. So let me go ahead and close that out. Lastly, we have a few trips that are on the books. Uh, the first one is IMS Athene 2020 Marketing Summit. Uh, that is to take place August 26th through the 29th of this year. The invitation period, period is July 1st of 2019 through June 30th of 2020. If you have any questions regarding if you qualified for the trip or what your point situation is for qualifications, uh, please feel free to give us a call at 800-255-5055. Um, we also have the Paradise on the Pacific IMS Marketing Summit that's scheduled for 2021. That's March 7th through the 11th. Uh, invitation period is from July 1st of 2019 through December 31st of 2020. Uh, qualification requirements for this is 3.5 million points. If you have questions or need more details, uh, feel free to give us a call. And we also have Shores of the Serenity, which is the Elite Summit, which is March 11th through the 14th, 2021. Qualification periods are the same time frame, July 1st, 2019 through December 31st of 2020. Uh, minimum qualifications for this is 6.5 million points. If you've accumulated 8.5 million points, you are eligible for both trips. So again, if you have specific questions regarding these trips, please feel free to uh, give us a call. And with that, Paige, I'm gonna turn this over to you. Are you there? Yep, sounds great. I'm just uh, waiting for your screen share to come through. Okay. There we go. All right. Can you see everything okay? Yep. Perfect. We'll go ahead and get started. Um, good morning, everyone, and thanks for your time this morning. Uh, what I thought I would do today, um, Tony asked me to share a little bit about disability insurance since it is Disability Insurance Awareness Month in the month of May. Um, so Surety's created a new tool this year called our Seller's Guide for Disability Income Insurance. And what I thought I would do is walk through the different concepts and pieces um, built out in that Seller's Guide. And it basically just takes you through start to finish everything about selling a disability policy. Um, so it's important to have those conversations with our clients and to really understand that need for income protection. 
Um, with everything going on with the pandemic and COVID-19, um, protecting paychecks is becoming more mainstream and consumers are talking about, you know, the loss of their paycheck more often right now. And so I don't want to say to take advantage of a situation that's negative, but what we found is that a lot of agents are asking about disability insurance because consumers are asking about disability insurance. So I'm Paige Phelps, I'm your regional sales manager here at Assurity, and today's agenda consists of me sharing with you the various opportunities within today's market, and then I'll walk through the different sections of the seller's guide. Um, it kind of takes it step by step and breaks it down for you so that you can you know, really hone in and focus on your skills in various sections, or maybe it's the entire process of selling disability insurance. We'll go through questions to ask your client. I'll share information with you about the product via the different features. We'll walk through a fact finder. I'll give you some tools to help you sell. Talk a little bit about the underwriting process because it's important to understand that. And then give you some tips at the end for closing the sale and making sure that you're successful in having those disability insurance conversations with consumers today. So let's go ahead and jump into the opportunities in today's market. Um, oftentimes when we think about disability insurance, we think about um, income protection for doctors, lawyers, executives. You know, typically that's where we're thinking of when we're thinking of disability insurance. But what's important to remember and a mission of Assurity is, is to remind you that there's a huge middle market out there that definitely needs income protection as well. And that's where we've dedicated our time and resources to focus in on that middle market and make sure those Americans that are getting up and going to work every day are also served from a paycheck protection standpoint. And so when we think about um, when Americans would feel a finan financial pinch, um, we found research that says seven in 10 would feel that financial pinch in a month or less without the paycheck. And as we watch the news and we see what's going on right now um, with unemployment, we're seeing people suffer from that from losing their paycheck and feeling that financial pinch in a month or less. Um, so what's, what we need to internalize and you know, recommend to our consumers is that there is an ability to protect your paycheck due to disability. So if you do become disabled and you can't go to work, we want you to know that there are those, those services, those insurance products that can help you through that difficult time. Another piece of the puzzle that might be helpful in telling the story um, about the opportunity for disability insurance is the length of time that disability typically lasts. And the latest study from Council for Disability Awareness shows us that the average duration of a disability is actually 34.6 months. So that's almost three years that someone would be out due to disability. And um, that's a really long time and oftentimes something that consumers don't think of they don't think of a disability lasting that long. The interesting piece about this and the, the place that you can connect that story is that we know that 67% of people do not have long-term disability insurance. Oftentimes they've got short-term disability insurance through work or they don't have any disability insurance at all. So the fact that those disabilities are on average lasting almost three years and the majority of people don't have that long-term disability insurance really tells a story about the coverage gap that it has been created in our market and that needs to be addressed as we as advisors go out and help and make recommendations to our clients about their insurance portfolio. So these statistics just paint a small piece of the puzzle, a small piece of the picture, and maybe statistics work for you in your sales process. Maybe they're not as comfortable, but wanted to provide you that information to give you an idea of how to create that story for your customers so that they really understand the importance of long-term disability insurance. So let's look at some different questions that you could use to ask your client. Um, we outline these in this seller's guide and walk you through the various questions and why you would be asking them. Um, I've put together a sample of those questions for you from the guide just to show you kind of what some of those questions might look like. So the first one um, kind of brings into the idea of more of an emotional concept um, and more practical financial justification. So asking how much income they would need to support themselves if they could no longer work due to illness or accident. And so maybe that looks like themselves and their family. What is that dollar amount that's necessary in order for you to continue to move forward? If you can't go to work, um, what does that number look like? What do you need in order for your household to continue to operate? Um, another question that's a really good one, how long could you go without a paycheck before it became difficult to pay your bills? 
we know from earlier statistics that most people would feel that pinch in a month or less. So we know that there's not a long length of time that they're going to be able to go without that paycheck before it does become difficult and before they start looking at alternatives to find additional dollars. And maybe they're, you know, considering removing their existing insurance coverage in force because they're afraid of paying those premiums right now. So, um, you know, it's one of those things where you think about protecting the paycheck so that they can continue what they're doing. Um, but you also want to think about what it's going to do for your book of business as well and keeping those other things in force that you've been working toward with them um, to keep them moving forward toward their financial goals. And then finally, the last question that I pulled in here was one that I wanted to spend a little bit of time on. But um, the question is, how would you afford to pay your mortgage if your paycheck stopped? And so when we think about the mid-market consumer and we think about, you know, protecting that market with a paycheck protection product, um, sometimes, you know, doing max benefit that they're eligible for doesn't always make sense, and that's okay. Um, what I always say is it's important to keep the family in the home, right? Keep them with some sort of consistency in their lives if they do become disabled and can't go to work. So let's protect that mortgage. Let's protect that rent payment on a monthly basis, and we'll write a benefit for that so that we can keep some sort of normalcy within that household. Um, and they don't lose their home where they've lived and built their life. So that would be a really good way to, to start the conversation um, purely based off of just a mortgage protection concept and conversation just to kind of get them started and get them engaged in what that monthly amount looks like and how important it would be for them to stay in their home. So then in the next section, we're looking at what does the product look like? We're taking a look at the features of the product the facts of the product. We're looking at how to put it in place with a fact finder and various prospects. So let's take a look about at our Century Plus Disability Income Policy. Um, this is our flagship product in our disability portfolio. We do have a variety of other products as well, but I want to spend a little time here and share with you what this product looks like so that you understand the story of a shorty's disability insurance and know how to position it with your customers. So our monthly benefit amounts range anywhere from $500 per month all the way up to $20,000 per month. Um, with that, that tells me that we can insure someone up to $450,000 of annual income per year. Uh, typically with your disability benefits, we're using about 60% of their current income in order to calculate that monthly benefit. So at a $20,000 monthly benefit, that's about $450,000 a year for an individual. I would tell you that our sweet spot and where the majority of our policies kind of fall in terms of that monthly benefit amount is someone making about $150,000 a year or less. Uh, that's where Shirty's mid-market consumer really fits and it really um, comes into play more often in our policies than not. But know that you have a lot of scope in terms of the types of customers you can work with when you're working with a Shirty's disability product. Um, one thing to pay attention to if you're coming from life insurance as your primary driver of business or a different um, area of financial services is that we do use age nearest birthday on disability. It's a little bit different, but we use whatever birthday they're closest to. Um, so just keep that in mind when you're looking at issue ages and you're looking at potential clients to cover. A couple of the things that make a surety stand out um, that are beneficial for not only you, but your customer as well, is that for anyone between the ages of 18 and 50 that's applying for benefits up to $4,000 per month, we do not require a medical exam. And that's big, especially right now. A lot of people are weary about going to an examiner's office or having an examiner come into their home. And so with a $4,000 monthly benefit, that's about $82,000 per year. That's going to cover a lot of the mid-market consumers that you're talking to about a surety paycheck protection product, and it'll allow you to avoid the necessary um, for exams and labs. So that's a really nice benefit there. We also do not require income verification for anyone who's a W-2 employee, someone who's not self-employed, applying for up to $4,000 a monthly benefit as well. So if you have someone who's a W-2 employee between the ages of 18 and 50, and they're making $82,000 a year, they're going to get their max benefit covered without having to go through a medical exam and without having to provide income verification. Um, that's 
huge and super awesome when it comes to the process of underwriting and getting a policy issued because it eliminates a lot of that heavy lifting necessary on the client's part in order to actually get that policy enforced. Um, one of the other things I want to touch on that makes the Surety's product stand out as well is that we have a two-year own occupation definition built into our policy no matter what. And that's true ONOC. Um, if they can't do the job that they've been trained to do and educated to do because they're disabled, um, they will still receive their benefit from us, even if they can go do something else outside of their job they've been trained and educated to do. So if they can earn an income somewhere else, but it's not in their primary field of what they were trained and educated to do, they're going to receive their disability benefit and they're going to receive their income from that other occupation that they've gone to. So that's built in two years, no matter what, into all of our disability um, century plus policies for all occupation classes. Uh, that's a really important, really important definition of disability and the strongest one that you can find um, in the market. So definitely use that as uh, a selling point, a talking point, maybe for yourself to understand that you're working with a really good product in terms of um, value and support for your clients. We also have a variety of different riders that I'm not going to touch on today, but you can utilize those riders to really enhance and customize that coverage for your client. Um, so if you have any questions about those riders, I'd be happy to answer them. There's about 10 different riders, and our philosophy and our story at Assurity is that we're going to give you more of a bare chassis policy and let you build out that policy to fit your client's needs versus get a, getting a policy with a bunch of different riders that don't really make sense for their situation. Um, so that's why we give you those 10 different riders and allow you to kind of customize that coverage to really fit your client's needs. Make sure that the premium fits the dollar amount that they're willing to pay per month for their disability insurance as well. Um, I do want to share with you that we do a lot of work with small business owners. And so um, with that, we can create, you know, some different opportunities here within the small business owner market to help those individuals out when it comes to purchasing, purchasing disability insurance. Um, we've got our business owner income enhancement, and what that does is that um, increases their uh, amount that we're creating their benefit off of um, by 20% to kind of help offset some of that income for tax purposes and writing down um, those tax dollars. So with that, if they were making $100,000 a year as a business owner, we would give them that 20% bump, and we would base their benefit off of $120,000 a year. So just to kind of give you an example of how that would work. We also have an occupation class upgrade. Um, so the nice thing about that is if you have someone um, who is more of a mid-market consumer and, you know, maybe I always use the example of someone who owns a plumbing company, but they're also doing some of the work. Um, they would technically be a 2A because they're doing some of that work um, per our occupation guidelines. But because they're a business owner, we can actually bump them up an occupation class to a 3A. And that kind of creates about a 25% premium savings for them just by moving them from a two to a three. So that helps out those business owners as well and creates a little extra cost savings for them. And then finally, um, you can use a multi-life discount with our products. So if you have three or more policies within an established um, employer, we can go ahead and take 15% off of the personal century plus disability policies. We also offer a business overhead expense product, and we can take 5% off of that business overhead expense as well. So if they're a small business owner, um, you know, they've got a great opportunity here with the Surety's product to have some of those a little extra features enhance um, their policy and make it a little bit more favorable for them as well. So let's walk through um, a scenario, and I'll show you guys kind of how this works and how we calculate benefit. Um, this, the seller's guide that we've put together walks you through this as well, but just want to show show you what this looks like. We've got Stacy, who's 36. She's married and she's a realtor. She makes about $76,000 a year. So in the seller's guide, there is this um, fill in the box calculation that you can kind of walk through each step and get used to the idea of asking, you know, what these different questions are, getting these amounts and coming up with a solution for your client. So in this situation, we're gonna ask what her three base, biggest expenses are each month in step one. She's going to tell us that that's her mortgage or rent payment, her car payment, and her student loan. So we see those amounts listed in each of those uh, corresponding boxes. And her 
three big monthly expenses each month total $2,850. In step two, we're going to ask her what her monthly salary is. Um, we know that she's making $76,000 per year. So that equates to $6,333 per month. Um, we're going to go ahead and multiply that by 0.6 because we want to take a look at what we can cover with 60% of her income, which is typically what a disability benefit is based off of. Um, so with that, we determine that her maximum monthly benefit is $3,800. Um, if we were to go ahead and write a policy for her max monthly benefit, it would cost $73.38 a month. So um, that's based off of, you know, her being 36 years old, non-tobacco, 4A occupation class as a realtor. We're going to do a $2,600 base benefit. We're going to use the supplemental disability income writer for the other $1,200 to make her whole at $3,800. Um, that's a five-year benefit period and a 90-day elimination period. So that's the premium dollar that we get um, based off of that max monthly benefit of $3,800 per month. Um, a lot of times when you're talking with consumers, they overestimate the cost of disability insurance. What we typically suggest is that you keep that cost of premium between 1% and 3% of their income, and that's usually a comfortable place for them to be in terms of purchasing disability benefits. Um, like we talked about a little bit earlier, you can take that idea and you can apply it to mortgage protection only. So we saw on the prior slide that her um, monthly mortgage payment is $1,950. So the total monthly benefit to cover that mortgage, um, if we just wrote that purely for $1,950, is $32 a month. So if Stacy feels more comfortable with just making sure that her mortgage is taken care of, if she were not able to do her job as a realtor, it would only cost her $32 per month to take care of that expense. So just want to show you a couple different ideas and ways that you can um, kind of work those disability benefits to make it fit for the client and what their needs are. Um, with this situation, we also know that because um, she's a W-2 employee, she's making, uh, or her monthly benefit's about $3,800 for the maximum monthly benefit. In this situation, she's not going to have to do a paramed exam, and she's not going to have to provide income verification. So a really nice way for her to get a disability policy quickly without having to provide that extra information. So now in this part of the, the seller's guide that I'm walking through, I do want to share with you some tools that we've put together. Um, our marketing and sales team has done a great job of putting together a variety of different resources when it comes to disability insurance. Um, at Assurity, disability insurance has always been a very important part of our product portfolio. It was actually the first policy that we ever wrote um, as a company um, over 130 years ago. So we've really built out that product suite, the suite of materials that are available to you in terms of helping you through that disability sale. So I would encourage you to check out assuritydi.com. It's a microsite that does not require a login, and it provides you all of the producer materials that you would want, as well as the consumer materials. So there's a lot of really great things out there, like case studies. There's some different videos. There's some different quizzes. Of course, our seller's guide that we're talking about today is out there as well. So I would definitely go check out assuritydi.com and use that as a resource as you continue to build your knowledge around disability insurance and continue to bring up that conversation and have that conversation with your customers. We also have a tool for you. Um, it's a quick quoter tool. And this is really nice because it doesn't, again, require you to log into anything. You can pull it up on your phone. You can pull it up on your laptop or your tablet, your iPad. Um, it's extremely user-friendly. And it allows you to quote a disability policy and get a high-level overview of what that quote might look like um, based off of some more common scenarios and based off of the information that you put into that quoter. So that is called myquote.assurity.com. And when you go to that site, you'll see a Century Plus DI quoter. You'll also see a DI for mortgage protection quoter. So there's a couple different quoters out there. Those are the two that are focused around disability insurance. Um, the Century Plus DI quoter is going to walk you through our regular Century Plus product that we talked about. It's going to allow you to input information and come up with a benefit based off of the annual income that that individual is making. The DI for Mortgage Protection Quoter actually is super cool. It requests 
um, the address of the uh, proposed insured. Um, you type in their address and it actually pulls in their mortgage information from Zillow. So based off of the Zillow estimate, their estimate of what their home is worth, um, it actually shows a disability monthly benefit based off of the estimated monthly mortgage payment for that home listed at that address that you put into the quoter. So it's super cool. It shows you that mortgage protection concept. And I think it's a really great tool to use in an interactive way with your customer. Um, you can share that with them. It's consumer friendly in terms of how it's written. And I think it would be um, a really great tool. Maybe you could do a screen share with them. Maybe you could push the quoter to them um, specifically and say, hey, check this out and let me know what you think. Um, but it's a really good, good way to get your customer engaged in the process and interact with them um, utilizing these tools that we've created for you. So let's briefly talk a little bit about underwriting and how that all shakes out when it comes to disability insurance. I think that's an important piece to touch on. Um, the first thing that we always are going to need to know in terms of underwriting disability insurance is what the occupation is. Um, we want to know what those job duties look like, what they're doing, um, where they're spending their time. So we do have an occupation guide that will help you classify that if you're doing your own quote. Um, the underwriters will also verify that you're in the, the correct occupation class as well when the application comes in. So we go with our occupation occupation classes anywhere from a 1A to a 4A. Your 1A is going to be your highest risk occupation. Those would be people that would be like um, custodians, exterminators, roofers, truck drivers. Those would be high risk occupations. Your 2As would be more of your skilled and manual labor occupations, a little bit lighter industries. Um, those would be like your carpenters, your chefs, your electricians, your farmers, your landscapers, your mechanics. Your three A's would be more of your professional office type occupations. But there's still some sort of activity or hazard involved in that work. So that could be like your daycare worker, your graphic artist, your physical therapist, your hospital and surgical nurse. And then your four A's are going to be your lowest risk occupation class. Definitely a professional office type occupation, rarely exposed to hazards. So that would be your accountant, your architect, your clinical nurse, your pharmacist, your real estate agent. So just to kind of give you an idea of what those occupation classes look like, it's always a good idea to kind of pick the lower occupation class if you're not exactly sure. That way, you go to your go back to your client with a um, better premium rate if the occupation class comes back higher. Um, so just kind of give you a little tip there. We also look at the income and the financial background of that client. So we know we've talked about income quite a bit already. Um, when we talk about calculating that disability benefit, like we mentioned earlier, it's going to be about 60% of their current income. Um, we will review those financial documentations if they are over um, the income verification limits and need to provide that information. One tip that we have for you there is that we do have a drop ticket option as well. So that drop ticket just allows you to collect basic demographic information about the client. You drop the ticket and then a surety's in-house interview team actually calls out and asks all the help questions. They're going to ask about the income information. They're going to take care of the rest of that process for you. So it makes it super easy. Um, you kind of just drop that ticket and move forward. We are going to ask income financial background information for anyone over those income verification limits. So like we talked about earlier, if they're W-2, not self-employed, um, and they're applying for $4,000 a monthly benefit or less, we're not going to require that information. Anything over that, we definitely are going to take a look at. And that could be the last two pay stubs, that could be tax returns, depending on what their situation is. Um, we have those resources available to tell you what to obtain in order to um, continue with that underwriting process. So then the third part of the underwriting piece is the medical history. So that's a key part of underwriting. Obviously, we're going to take a look at and their health history, what they've got going on, and we're basically checking against the idea of morbidity. Um, so you'll want to make sure that that health information is completed. The nice thing about it is that if we do get to a point where we um, have to modify coverage or exclude coverage, we can absolutely do that. Um, we also have an impaired risk disability product, so if it gets to a point where we have to decline for the Century Plus, our underwriters will automatically go ahead and take a look at that impaired risk product and see if we can make an offer there. Um, so super nice there that we can kind of work with what you've got in order to try and make the best underwriting decision that we can. 
So those are kind of the three components of the underwriting piece to be aware of. Let's go ahead and move into the tips for closing the sale and we'll go ahead and wrap up here um, shortly. So with this at the end, we wanna make sure that we're um, you know, really well put together in terms of how we're gonna close the sale. Um, you've kind of walked through every other step of the process. And now we need to make sure that we're in a position where we can make sure that that sale is going to be ours. So um, one of the things that we have kind of put together in the seller's guide is a bunch of different objections that agents commonly get when it comes to disability insurance. And we've actually given you the questions that you can ask back to that client when you do get those objections. And um, we know that objections come in all shapes and sizes. And so we want you to be as prepared as you can. Um, to be able to come back to that client and say, hey, no, we need to reconsider this. Um, you know, that's a valid objection, but here are some other things that we have to think about. So I pulled one example from the guide for you that I'll share with you that I uh, help agents through quite often. Uh, typically the question or the objection from the consumer is I have disability insurance through work. Um, what we know there is that there are a lot of other questions to ask to help the client realize where their coverage might not fit, fit or meet their needs. Um, so we put these questions together for you and we can just kind of walk through them. Um, but one of the good questions to ask when they say that to you is, do you know the ins and outs of your group policy? Um, do those benefit periods and elimination periods fit your needs? And are they going to make sure that you're taken care of if you do go out due to disability insurance? Another great question is, is your monthly benefit amount enough to cover your needs? A lot of times those group policies are um, set at standard benefit amounts across the board. And so maybe it doesn't fit the exact needs of that individual. Um, and maybe there's gaps in terms of not providing enough benefit for that individual um, in order to take care of all their needs that they would need taken care of. So that would be a great question to ask. Another one, are the benefits portable? If you leave your job, and you're paying for this policy, can you take that policy with you? Um, or are you paying for something that you're not allowed to keep? So that would be a great question. And then finally, do you know if your coverage applies outside of the workplace? Um, a lot of times those group policies cover uh, disabilities on the job. Sometimes they do not cover them for 24 hours or off the job disabilities and accidents. Um, so that would be another great question to ask. So like I mentioned, there's a couple different objections within that seller's guide. I just pulled this one because it's the more common one that I see happen often. Um, and kind of they'll walk you through those different questions that you can ask and help you dig a little bit deeper in those conversations. So just to kind of wrap it up, um, you know, the whole point of talking about disability insurance is really to create the idea of um, a lot of additional value for that consumer. Um, their paycheck is extremely important to them. It's the foundation for everything else that they're going to do. Um, and so making sure that they understand what disability insurance does for them, what those options and choices are, and giving them the, the, the ability to feel in control when they're making that decision, um, and in control when they are in a situation that they really have very little control over. Um, so, you know, sharing with them the story of what disability insurance can do for them, and really attaching a lot of value to those disability benefits is really going to help solidify the need for disability insurance and help you to close the sale. A great way to kind of tie it all together is to find what fits your selling method and fits um, what your style is. So we see, you know, a lot of people use stories to share the need for disability insurance and to emphasize what that looks like. Um, people will share statistics, they'll make it personal, um, they bring a lot of confidence to the conversation. So just kind of giving you some ideas of things to make sure that you have put together um, as you go into these conversations about disability insurance, as you work toward protecting more of your clients' paychecks from disability um, and, you know, keeping those, those incomes intact for them, keeping them working toward their financial goals. So with that, I appreciate your time this morning. Um, I will go ahead and take any questions that you have. Um, hopefully this kind of gets you all jump started into the month of May and into having more and more conversations about disability insurance. We appreciate your time and effort and attention to having more of those conversations with your client. We know how important it is for people to have paycheck protection and so we want this message 
to be received by as many people as we, you know, can can talk to you and can share that story with. So with that, Tony, I'll turn it back over to you and ask if we have any questions to answer for the audience today. Okay. Yep, they're popping up. Uh, first one, and I'm going to switch this back over to me here real quick. Okay, so the first question is, if the policyholder is injured at work and is covered by a workman's comp, will the policy pay above workman's comp? And I'm assuming they're talking about the disability policy if they had that in force. Yeah, so those two things would coordinate with each other. Um, we would obviously take a look at the situation, what that benefit is being paid out in the claims process, um, and then determine if we can offer additional payouts in addition to the workers' comp. All right. And let me see. Here. It looks like it's duplicate. Here's another one. Um, the benefit amount, um, you mentioned 60%. Is that the standard for all incomes? Um, yeah, so the 60% the benefit amount, and um, that's kind of typically where it falls. Um, with disability insurance, if you make more money, it's going to be a little bit less than 60%. And if you make less money, it's going to be a little bit more than 60%. It's typically the general rule of thumb, but most carriers use 60% as kind of like the rough estimate um, of what you can expect when it comes to calculating that benefit. Okay. There's any addition up. Here's one. All right. If you don't have scripts, do you have a good lead? Uh, looks like it says phraseology to use to grab their attention. Um, so in the seller's guide, there are various talking points. There's a lot of different content within that. Um, I would also encourage you to check out the various case studies because that walks you through um, more of the scripting type stuff that you might be looking for to help you with those those sales. And that information, those resources are all on assuredydi.com. So I would definitely check that out and see if you can find something um, that would help in putting your story and your conversation together. Okay. Let's see here. Do we have any more? Any more questions from anyone? Okay, looks like nothing is popping up. So, up. Oh, spoke too soon. Okay, if the insured has short-term DI uh, that pays for six months, will this, product, will this product only start and then it stopped, I'm assuming, after the six months? I guess they're referencing to um, piggybacking short-term with long-term. Yeah, so it can be set up that way where we can piggyback the benefits so that when the short-term ends at six months, the long-term starts and picks up from there. Um, you can also write a long-term policy to start sooner, and those benefits will coordinate with each other. Um, typically, long-term and short-term are viewed as separate types of disability insurance, and so uh, they will coordinate separately from each other. Great question. All right. Any more questions? Waiting to see if something else pops up. While I'm doing that, there's a couple of polling questions that uh, need to throw up there. If you'd like more information regarding individual disability insurance, I do have a polling question that I just put up for you. If you could just respond to that, we'll make sure to get out more information to you this up for a little bit. Now, Paige, are any of the uh, slides available to agents from the PowerPoint presentation from today's webinar? 
Yep, so I will send the, a copy of the slide deck to Tony and he can um, distribute to you. So I would say um, if you're available to answer the poll right now and select yes, he can get you a copy of the slide deck um, and get that information out to you. Awesome. So I'll leave this up for a few more seconds. Make sure everybody has responded. Looks like the majority of the agents would like to get more information. So that's all it's good to see. And then lastly, if you're not appointed with the surety and you would like to get appointed with the surety, I do have a polling question for you on that. If you could please respond to that. I'll make sure to get the appointment paperwork out to you. To get that appointment submitted. And it looks like quite a few of you want to get appointed as well. Awesome. All right, I'll leave this up for a few more seconds. Okay, it looks like we don't have any additional questions, but if you do decide that you do have questions after uh, this call, uh, feel free to give me a call. Um, as you see here, my uh, email address is here. It's Tony at IamsInc.com. There are also two other um, life sales directors, uh, Reed Starks and Jess Riley. Uh, their emails reads is Reed at IamsInc.com and Jess is Jess at IamsInc.com. You could always uh, give us a call as well at 800-255-5055. So any um, final words, Paige? No, I appreciate your time. Um, again, and your attention to selling uh, more disability insurance. And if you guys need anything, feel free to reach out um, to your team at IMS and we'll communicate in that way. All right. Well, thank you everybody for um, attending. I hope everybody stays safe and uh, we look forward to uh, having another webinar this time next Monday. You guys have a great day and a great week. Thank you.